All right, welcome to Python tips number three. In this tip, we're going to be covering correlation plots, one of my favorite things in Python. So what we're going to be doing is making this beautiful correlation plot that's custom. It's actually made with the plot nine package. And what we're doing is reviewing vehicle fuel economy uh, as a function of a bunch of different features, numeric features. So you can see MPG is the top diagonal. And what we're doing is reviewing the correlation between all of these different features to see where uh, there are features that support and features that detract from uh, fuel economy. So, for example, right here is MPG. We can see cylinder, the number of cylinders as that increases, that in increases the engine size. And we can see that there's a negative 0.78 correlation with that particular feature same thing with displacement same thing with horsepower as horsepower increases fuel economy tends to go down as weight increases uh, as acceleration increases the mpg tends to go up and that's because these are lighter vehicles that are accelerating uh, and then also the model year so this is something interesting we're seeing that the model year as it goes increases it tends to improve fuel economy so very cool uh, we're going to teach you how to make this correlation plot uh, to get started, what we need to do is we need to get set up for the Py Python Tips newsletter. So you want to check out this. There's a link in the video notes to the Business Science Python Tips newsletter. You're going to sign up for that. It's going to give you access to all the code that we have here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, do a git pull. And what this will do is it will sync up your uh, uh, your, your file folders so you should see this O3 correlation plots become visible inside this folder we're going to be working out of the O3 correlation plot.py file that's the file that I have open right here I'm also testing out a new theme so you can see we've got a white theme here so let me know if you like it in the comments and uh, we'll get started um, so uh, once you get this set up we're going to go down through we'll start with our libraries so load in our libraries that we need do, just doing a shift enter and what that's doing is loading the libraries over here. Uh, it note that I have my interactive console open. If you don't have that, just change your uh, settings file and have make sure to add this Jupyter Send selection to interact interactive window to true, and that'll allow you to, to do the shift enter uh, to send it over here to the interactive console. Um, next, we're going to pull in our data set. So this is going to pull in a pandas data frame that has our MPG cylinders displacement horse power and several other columns in here. Um, and what we're going to be doing is working with correlation. So the first part, we're going to be checking out how to create a correlation matrix. Um, and so we're going to start with our data frame and we're going to actually, it's just a simple method uh, that comes with pandas. Uh, it's the core method. So we run this, this makes what's called a correlation matrix. And we can actually check out the documentation for this function. So it's pd.dataframe.core, shift enter. And we can see that this is how it works. You take a data frame, you attach the dot core method to it, and uh, it's got a method of Pearson uh, and also min periods equal to one. Um, we'll focus on adjusting this method. So there's a couple different types of correlation methods. There's the, the Pearson, which is the standard. Uh, you also have Kendall's, Tau correlation, Spearman rank correlation, and so on. Um, you can just change those up. Here's an example of the Spearman correlation. So this is actually a little bit different than the regular correlation. It's designed for uh, ranked features or ordered features, um, and it allows you to uh, just give you give you a different method for correlation. Um, we'll, we'll be switching back here over to the Pearson correlation. So I'm going to create a data frame now. And I'm going to focus on creating heat maps in the second section. So I've created this data frame. It's all it is is the mpgdf.core. Um, it looks something like this. And this is the Pearson correlation. We can see it's a little bit different than the Spearman correlation. Um, the first one is the easiest way to make a heat map. So generally what you want to do is you want to turn this into a heat map and you're going to put it into a report. The first method is with Seaborn. So I'm going to import Seaborn as a C. I'm going to do C.heatmap. And I'm just going to do data equals DF and annotation equals true. So if I do shift enter, I get the heat map in here and we can see it comes up as a matplotlib plot. And uh, it looks pretty good uh, for the most part. The, um, the only issue that you're going to run into is if you want to change this up, you're going to have to go in and modify matplotlib uh, plots uh, parameters. 
So uh, instead of doing that, what I want to do is I want to show you a bonus in using Plot9, which is one of my favorite packages. Uh, it's a port of ggplot2, uh, but it doesn't have any dependencies on R, and it basically allows us to use to develop uh, very customized plots. So we're going to import Plot9 as P9, and then we're going to import plydata.cat tools as cat, and I'll show you what these do here in a second. So um, the first thing that we need to turn our data set into a tidy data set. So right now, if you look at mpgdf and do the core method, um, this is what's called a wide data set. So we actually need um, this to be in a column and these all to be in a column and then there to be one column called values. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the dot melt method first, and that's going to get us part of the way there. So now we've got a column called variable and value, and we can see it's a long data frame. We're then going to reset the axis. Um, so this is all pandas data manipulation that I teach in my uh, 101P course. Uh, we're then going to set the axis, and that's going to change this the column names up to be variable 1, variable 2, and value. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign another column over here, and that's going to be the label text. And that's what we're going to show in our heat map, our customized heat map when we are ready. So this is actually a text column, and uh, it's been uh, used uh, np.round, or actually it's not a text column, it's still a numeric column, but it's been rounded to just two digits. Um, and then the last thing is I'm going to be changing, these are text columns right now. So I'm going to use this function called cat underscore in order, which comes from the plydata.cat tools. So these are tools for uh, working with categorical data. And what this does is allows me to uh, order these as ordered categories that are in the order of appearance. And this allows me to uh, keep make sure my ggplot um, is, uh, is set up correctly. So I'll show you what it does once we make the ggplot. It doesn't look any different here, but these are actually categorical columns now with labels and mpg will be labeled uh, the first one and uh, you can see here I'm doing cat in order here for variable 2 so mpg will be the last uh, category in variable 2 column and we do that for a specific reason that I'll show you here in a minute so I'm going to save this as tidy underscore core and we now have our data frame saved here and now I can make my customized heat map using the plot 9 ggplot2 syntax so we're first going to create just a canvas here, um, and this creates our blank canvas. Then we're going to add the geom tile. So this is going to add the heat map geometry, and it looks pretty uh, kind of crazy right now, um, and we need to kind of adjust it. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some labels to it. So I'm going to use my P9 geom label, and I'm going to uh, map to the label attribute for the geom label, uh, the lab text column. So that remember the lab text is what we created up here. So if I do shift and enter, this will create our little um, labels here. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change up the um, scale here for the color or the fill. So our, I'm gonna use this thing called scale fill distiller. And this is just kind of a little bit better in my opinion for reports, it kind of goes from white to dark blue. So dark blue is the lowest, the most negative, and white is the highest. Um, then I'm going to add theme minimal. And that's going to get rid of the, uh, the grayish background, so it's all white. Uh, and then the last part is just adjusting um, a couple of the additional aesthetics. I want to get these this x-axis. I want this to be oriented at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to adjust the figure size ratio to be 8 by 6. And then I'm going to give it a, a nice label of vehicle fuel economy. So that'll be the title. So that's what I'm doing down here. Shift and enter. And there we go. Now we have a nice custom, custom looking correlation plot that you can put into a report and it'll look amazing and it'll really impress your colleagues. So uh, if you want to learn more about what we just did here, so learning pandas and plot nine, these are two of the main packages that I teach in my 101 course. Uh, and just to recap, Seaborn is great for making quick plots, uh, but if you really want to um, get into uh, customizations, definitely check out Pandas and Plot9 for making professional reports. I teach Pandas and Plot9 in my Python for Data Science Automation course. It contains five hours 
just on pandas and also another four hours just on the plot nine package. Uh, that's how much I love these two packages. They're really important to, to learn if you want to uh, do data science for business in a professional work setting. So here's the link for the course. Check it out.